A while ago, I had an idea. A Twitter bot that grants people's wishes. So how do we actually go about building a Twitter bot that can grant people's wishes? Well, we can think of it in a two-phase process. First, we'll design the Twitter bot and then we'll actually implement the software required for it. For the first part of the design process, we really just want to lay out all the requirements for this Twitter bot. So the first thing we want to do is find tweets that have wishes in them. In this case, we'll just search for tweets that have the phrase, I wish I knew how to in them, as this will simplify our problem a lot. So after we have a tweet that has a wish in it, we just want to extract that wish from the tweet. We don't really need any of the other unnecessary parts of it. Once we've extracted the question from the tweet, we can go ahead and send that question to YouTube and find a video that'll answer that question. Since YouTube just has so many videos for everything, there's a good chance we'll find what we're looking for here. Once we find a video, we're going to take that URL and actually reply back to the user with that URL. We'll finish up the requirements by thinking about how we want this app to run. In this case, we'll have it run about once an hour and it'll only reply to tweets that it hasn't already replied to. Before we start coding, let's think about the tools we'll use to implement this design. For part one, we can use the search function of the Twitter API and find tweets that match our criteria. For part two, let's first think about how we can extract the wish from a tweet that contains extra words that just aren't relevant. For starters, let's only use tweets that start with the phrase, I wish I knew how to. Otherwise, the context of the tweet can be too hard to understand for a simple bot like this. This can be done with a simple regex. Next, we want to extract the wish from the tweet. To do this, we can just take the text up to the first punctuation mark, as this will generally separate the wish from other ideas that may be in the tweet. Now, obviously not all tweets are correctly punctuated, so we'll use a third-party API to add punctuation. Then we'll use a regex to take the text before the first punctuation. Finally, we'll take away the first part of the text that says, I wish I knew. What we're left with is a simple question that we can search on YouTube. This leads us to part three. We can use the search functionality of the YouTube API to find the URL of the most relevant video. We'll reply to the original tweet using the update status function of the Twitter API. There are many different ways that we can run this app. We could simply just use a command to run the program once an hour from our local machine. However, for my implementation, I wanted to run this program 24 hours a day without having to leave my computer constantly on. So for me, I chose to do this with a Lambda function on AWS. AWS Lambda is just a way for us to run code without needing a server. We can set a trigger to run our code once an hour, and there's a place to put our environment variables, which will be important later on when we actually start coding. Finally, in order to prevent replying to tweets multiple times, we'll keep track of the tweet ID of the last tweet we responded to and use the sense ID parameter when we search for tweets to only get new tweets. However, since we're using Lambda functions, there's a big problem that arises, which is that we can't actually store this tweet ID inside of our Lambda function. Since our Lambda function doesn't have persistent memory for us to store variables over multiple function calls. Therefore, we'll just use a simple database to store and update this tweet ID. It seems a little silly to create an entire database just to store one value, and by no means is this the only way to do it, it's just the way that I did it. Since our function is running from AWS, connecting to the database will be pretty straightforward. Now it's time to actually code this up. For this project, I used Node.js. I made it so long ago that I can't exactly remember why I did that, as opposed to just making it in something like Python, but I know that it does work well with Lambda functions, and we can access all of the APIs pretty easily using Node.js, so it's not a bad choice. Given that we've already thought about the design and all the tools we'll need to implement it, the coding is actually pretty straightforward. We'll start by requiring all the packages we need. The Google package for the YouTube API, this twit package, which is just a wrapper for the Twitter API, the request package for using the third party API we'll use to punctuate our tweets, an emoji regex package, which I'll get into later, and then the AWS package. Next, we'll actually initialize these APIs and we will need API keys. You can get API keys when you sign up for these APIs. These were all completely free. We're saving all of our API keys and tokens within environment variables. This way, if we ever want to upload this code to something like GitHub, we won't be exposing these API keys to the public. This isn't necessarily required for this project, but it's good practice to do this. 
And the Lambda function does have a place for storing these environment variables. Here we'll just define some constants we need, mostly just regexes, but I'll get into some of these later. The first function we define is for the Lambda function to know which function to call when it gets triggered. In this case, it'll be the handler function, which we'll just call the getTweetID function. The getTweetID function is just going to get the tweet ID from our database, and then we'll use that when we search for tweets. For search tweets function, we'll use the Twitter API, and we'll search for tweets that match our criteria. We'll get up to 50 tweets, but these will only be tweets that have been tweeted since the last tweet we responded to. Once we get a response, we'll actually put the tweet ID of the most recent tweet back into our database and update our tweet ID. For each tweet we receive, we'll first start by running a regex on it. This regex will just be used to see if the tweet starts with the phrase, I wish I knew how to. If it doesn't, then we'll skip this tweet. Then we'll actually do something I didn't talk about before, but we'll replace all the emojis and acronyms in the tweets with punctuation marks. This is just because a lot of people tend to use emojis or acronyms like LOL in place of punctuation. So this will just help us clean up our string a little bit. We use more regexes to do this. Here's, here's a regex that just looks for acronyms like LOL, ONG, things like that. And we also have a, a package called emoji regex, which will match any emojis in the string. Once we've removed all our acronyms and emojis from the string, we'll send that to add punctuation. That punctuation function is just going to make a request to the API to punctuate our text. And when we receive that text back, we'll send it to the search video function. The search video function is just going to use the YouTube API to search for videos that match your text. We only want to search for videos and we want to sort these in order of relevance to our text. And we only want the most relevant result. Once we get our response, we'll just use this to get the URL for the video. Then we'll pass that on to the tweet reply function. The tweet reply function will just use the Twitter API to reply to the original tweet with the YouTube URL. After the program finishes replying to all relevant tweets, the Lambda function will stop until it's triggered again. I actually made this bot in September of 2019 and it's been running for the past eight months. Since then, it's tweeted over 20,000 times and it's gotten almost 2 million impressions on its tweets. You can actually view it right now if you go to Twitter at dumbgenie and you can even try and tweet it a wish and see if it responds. Right now, the limiting factor of this project is that the YouTube API only allows you 100 search requests per day. So the maximum amount of tweets it can currently respond to in a day is only 100. So if it doesn't respond and you tweet at it, that may be why. As simple as this project may be, it's still a good example of how to go through the design and implementation process and how to use APIs in your own project. So hopefully this video was helpful to anyone who might be trying to create their own Twitter application or just any sort of software project in general. And if you made it this far, then thanks for watching.